country affecting those right here at the San Antonio International Airport. We're going to hear about what plans these travelers have coming up next. The latest number in deaths from the dangerous wet winter weather over the Christmas weekend and why officials are calling Buffalo, New York ground zero. And today is going to be the coolest day for the remainder of the year. We're expecting a warm up into New Year's Eve weekend. I've got those details coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And we now have learned the name of the person found dead in a burned vehicle hidden in some brush on the city's south side. She is 22 year old Braylon Sampson. That's according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. Sampson's body was discovered back on December 10th near I-10 and I-37 exchange. San Antonio police say the vehicle was off the roadway when they found it. The medical examiner's office says Sampson died from burn injuries and smoke inhalation. The manner of her death is still being determined. And Amanda's fighting to survive after a crash on the city's west side where he was pinned between his truck door and the ground. This happened in the early hours this morning of near 151 and Ingram Road. Crews on site say a driver rolled his truck into one of the freeway pillars. That's when the driver became pinned. San Antonio firefighters were able to free him. He's now in the hospital and at last check is in critical condition. No word yet on what caused the man to crash his truck. The Red Cross helping out a family of two after a fire at a west side apartment building. San Antonio fire crews were trying to figure out the cause of the fire last night on Casterville Road, not far from South General McMullen and Highway 90. Firefighters say flames were seen inside one of the units and then spread into the attic of the one story building. There were no injuries reported, but two people are without a place to stay for the time being. Right now, they're being helped out by the Red Cross. Well, Crime Stoppers is asking for your help in locating suspects in a robbery at Rack Room Shoes. is happening on the Northwest Loop 410. San Antonio police say an employee was assaulted in the process. This happened back on August 6th. Police say multiple items were taken from the store and both suspects ran off in or took off in a four door silver Chevrolet Impala. If you have any information, just take a look at your screen right now and you can call this number 210-224-STOP. Airports across the country still packed with stranded travelers. One airline in particular taking a lot of heat today. Thousands of Southwest flights have been canceled and the company has issued an apology. So these cancellations are also happening across the country and here in San Antonio, Max Massey talked to some local travelers and they are trying to figure out what to do next. It has been a nightmare, an actual nightmare. Rachel Telden is a local parent working to navigate these Southwest Airlines cancellations. We have three kids trying to get out of town. Two of them are canceled. His is on time. We kept checking, coming, it's going, it's going. And um, this morning when we woke up, we checked his flight, it's going, but then we get an email that he's rebooked for Saturday. Rachel and her family are far from the only ones who are frustrated with this current situation. I was in line for four and a half hours, but the people that were here probably after me were probably in line for at least an hour or two longer than that, but judging by how long the line got after I got here. Well, more than 20 cancellations for Southwest flights this morning. If you take a look at the big board, it's almost surprising to see an on-time label next to a Southwest airline flight. As for families, they're doing all they can to try to get to their destination. And I really tried and they're not budging. So we just went from to American, to Delta, to Spirit. We went to every counter just to see if he could get to camp because he was so excited and they're all booked. After calls, emails and standing in line for hours, some of these travelers finally got explanations. They just said that um, they have basically all their crews are stranded in different places across the country. With the apologies in the Department of Transportation investigation, not really helping with the flights. But it's really a disaster. I have two kids at home that are trying to get to their places on Southwest. We usually use Southwest. We love Southwest. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Now, if you're planning on getting out on the streets to make any road trips, Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos has a look at the latest road closures around the city you need to be aware of. The road work is wrapping up for 2022, but we can expect to see the work continue in 2023. Yeah, we have a few things going on. Let's talk about Wurzbach Parkway for a moment. Road work will continue at least up until New Year's Eve, and we can probably expect some of the work to continue into the early days of next year. But uh, the work begins at 9 in the morning and should wrap around 3 in the afternoon. Drivers, during that time, you will see alternating lane closures in both directions from Blanco Road to Thousand Oaks Drive. Now, let's take a drive over here to Loop 1604, this time on 
on the northeast side of San Antonio, where striping and barrier work will continue on Tuesday, January 3rd, wraps up on Saturday, January 7th. That's at least a portion of it. Uh, it is overnight, so 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. That's when drivers will see alternating lane closures on Loop 1604 eastbound from Nacogdoches Road to I-35. One last look here along FM 2252 Nacogdoches Road. Bridge work will continue on Thursday, January 5th and wrap on Friday, January 6th. Pretty brief. 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when drivers will see full closures of lanes in both directions right there at the Evan Road intersection. All right, so scan this QR code if you want to stay updated with all the current closures that are happening right now in and around the Alamo City. But for now, safe travels into the new year. So you say there's still a chance the Cowboys could win the division. We'll break it down for you coming up in sports. Next, a story about a local school's walkout back in 1968 and two attending students at the time recall those memories and the moments just before stepping out their classroom door. It has been more than 30 years since the Texas Supreme Court ruled the state's system of public school funding is unconstitutional. Yet the changes were far from perfect. The most controversial one has become part of an overall funding formula. So the so-called Robin Hood plan involves property-rich school districts giving to property-poor districts. Jesse Degado says it took students in one of the city's poorest districts to trigger decades of court cases. Those days, who carried a camera? The only photos are in newspaper clippings of the historic walkout at Edgewood High School. But Richard Herrera has quite a collection of them. He, Manuel Garza, and Rebecca Ortiz were very much a part of it in 1968. Back then, what is now the Edgewood Fine Arts Academy had broken windows, no AC, no heat. Even so, Garza says the principal had told a teacher. Take off your coat so the students won't think it's cold. What is now a science lab was where Ortiz excelled in typing class, yet she couldn't compete at other schools. We had never seen an electric typewriter. But having seen what other schools had, like certified teachers and college-bound curriculums, they say is what finally led to the mass walkout. 3,000 students we had at the time, everybody walked out. Herrera says his English teacher had blocked the door that's behind him. The bell rang, she stood up and says, nobody's walking out of my class. Until, he says, his brother on the other side slowly pushed it open so they ran out. Despite teachers and support being suspended and threats of expulsion or being unable to graduate. We knew we were taking a risk, but we said, this has to change. We deserve better. So did the highest courts in the land and the state of Texas. It all amounted to public school equity funding. You get the best education possible. According to your zip code, it's not right. Old newspaper clippings serve a purpose, but Edgewood ISD is about to launch a social media campaign to highlight its history. It's important that they know because it gives them identity that DNA of social justice. Born out of that day in 1968, says Edward Superintendent Eduardo Hernandez. The beauty of it is that this was students who were doing it, so that's pretty cool. His hope, he says, today's students will finish what others started 54 years ago. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Moved here 40 something years ago and that fight over education, that Robin Hood formula, still going on. Man. Unbelievable. What I'm glad is not still going on, Sarah, is those freezing temps. Oh my goodness, yes. This morning we got down to 32. We're going to be above freezing tomorrow morning. So we had for six days in a row a low temperature at or below freezing here in San Antonio. Thankfully, we are on our warming trend. The aquifer is actually up a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours. And even though we're in the middle of mountain cedar season, mountain cedar is low as well as molds. Molds are low too. Now, as we take a look across the city, here's a look at some of the temperatures out there. Beautiful cirrus clouds out there right now. 52 in San Antonio, 52 in sunny at Kelly and 51 at JBSA Randolph. Winds are generally calmer from the southeast at about five miles per hour. At round two, we're going to be close to 60 and then 60 degrees for the high temperature this afternoon. Again, south winds at about five miles per hour in a chilly evening dipping into the 40s, but not necessarily cold. So temperatures over the next few days are going to be steadily rising so much so that by the weekend we'll be in the mid 70s. I'll show you that New Year's Eve weekend forecast. Any rain chances for us? Well, slim chance possible Thursday, but drought will persist. And again, great weather to start 2020. 
2023. These details and of course more coming up in just a bit. The historic Christmas weekend storm has now killed more than 50 people nationwide. More than half of those deaths happening in western New York. Crews are struggling to dig out of the region around Buffalo from what authorities are calling a once in a generation storm. NBC's Alexis Christophorus has the details. The death toll rising after the monster storm that pounded western New York and what Governor Kathy Hochul is calling the blizzard of the century. This blizzard is the one for the ages. Authorities saying the dead found in cars, homes and snowbanks. Some died while shoveling snow. Others when first responders couldn't respond in time to medical emergencies. Neighbors turning to one another for life-saving help. I'm coming. Buffalo resident Shakira Autry took in 64-year-old Joseph White Saturday after hearing his calls for help outside her home. I found him screaming for help. When I looked out the window, he was getting blowed up and down the street. It was out of control. These residents opening up their home to visitors from half a world away after a knock on their door. They said, we're part of a tour group from South Korea and we have 10 people in our vehicle. And I said, get all of them inside our house right now. Roads still impassable, forklifts used to clear abandoned vehicles, and the city's airport shuttered until at least Wednesday. As police were stuck elsewhere, looters got to work, smashing store windows and stealing merchandise. Law enforcement's been working on life-saving. We have the worst storm probably in our lifetime and maybe in the history of the city and our community, and, and to see this happening is just terrible. The historic storm throwing a knockout punch to holiday travel. Southwest Airlines hit the hardest, with at least 70% of its flights canceled Monday. The Department of Transportation says it will examine whether those cancellations were controllable. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Going to really feel sorry for those people who come Friday and Saturday in the weekend when we're walking around in flip-flops and mm. T-shirts. and Ugh, I know. <laughs> like, I'm excited for the warmer weather, Why we Sarah. Live here. Yeah, you know, it's nice to have a, a little bit of a, a Christmassy feeling to the air, but it's also nice when temperatures get back into the 70s. Yep. Uh, so uh, obviously there's lots of issues for uh, airlines, but right now across the state of Texas, if you're planning on driving or if you have loved ones planning on driving across the state of Texas, there's not going to be any weather issues the next couple of days. Today, high temperatures will be in the 50s with sunshine and even in the 60s early tomorrow morning. Temperatures in the 30s. But by the afternoon across Texas, we'll be in the 70s, sunshine, and it really isn't until Thursday that we start to see any kind of uh, precipitation show up across the state of Texas. A few showers are possible around San Antonio on Thursday, isolated at best, but some severe weather is actually possible in parts of East Texas Thursday in the late afternoon and early evening hours. So no major issues on the roads until about Thursday. Now, in spite of the fact that we have had a cold snap this past week and a half here this December. We are actually looking at temperatures above average for the month so far, and I'm forecasting above average temperatures for the remainder of the year. So December 2021, even though we had this cold snap, will on average be warmer than the average December. And it just goes to show that it's all about your perspective, right? I think I'll probably remember the cold over Christmas more so than I'll remember the warmer weather across December. All right, take a look outside right now. Beautiful blue skies, some cirrus clouds out there. That's why the airport is detecting mostly cloudy skies. Cirrus clouds are made out of ice crystals up high in the atmosphere. Give it a bit of a milky hue. 52 degrees at the airport. Winds from the south southeast at about five miles per hour. Those winds from the southeast are actually going to help dew points rise a little bit uh, around south central Texas. But right now it's comfortable in 56 in Valley, 54 in Hondo, 50 in Gonzales, 55 in Kerrville, 59 in Del Rio and 60 in Catula. Around your neighborhood it should be about 53 in the south side of San Antonio near Sinsen, uh, 50 uh, in New Braunfels, 51 in Canyon Lake and 57 in Bandera. High temperature today forecast at about 60 degrees, so just rising a little bit more, just a smidge 
cooler than the average of, of 63 here in San Antonio. Uh, all in all, though, it's going to be a very pleasant afternoon. Sit outside if you can. Gorgeous day. A little bit on the cool side. Just have a light sweater. Then tonight, if you have evening plans, it is going to get chilly in the 40s by about 8 o'clock. And by midnight, we should be at 40 degrees in San Antonio. I mentioned that those winds are turning around to the south right now. Dew points are in the 20s. That's very dry air, but watch what happens over the coming days. We start to see those winds turn to the south and dew points are going to steadily rise into the upper 50s by Thursday morning. Now, really, it becomes uncomfortable when the dew points get into the 60s. That's when you notice the mugginess. So we don't anticipate that around San Antonio, but it is going to become just muggy enough to where you aren't going to need that chapstick and it's going to prevent temperatures from freezing in the overnight hours, which is nice. So early tomorrow morning, we'll be waking up with temperatures in the 30s and 40s. Uh, by the way, cloud cover expected tomorrow in the morning and those clouds could be stubborn at times. I think east of San Antonio really holding onto those clouds, west of San Antonio seeing a little bit more sunshine. Around San Antonio, we should get into the mid 60s at least uh, and the further east you go you'll be closer to 60 degrees the further west you go you'll be closer to 70 uh, as you'll see a little bit more sun to the west of San Antonio coming up in the next half hour we're going to talk a little bit about that slim rain chance on Thursday and dig into that New Year's Eve weekend forecast looks good doesn't it lows in the 50s highs in the mid 70s pretty nice nice but still uh, not ideal firework popping weather because it's been so dry. Exactly. That's exactly right, Sarah. So thanks for that reminder. Everyone be careful. Thank you, Sarah. Spurs with another win over another playoff team. We got the highlights from last. Look at those unis Utah was wearing. So bright. Yeah, find those guys anywhere. Players getting a chance to enjoy some of the fun San Antonio has to offer before they hit the field for the Alamo Bowl Thursday. Security care at the AT&T Center last night led to a lockdown and a delay in the Spurs Jazz game. The game was delayed by 30 minutes after the AT&T Center surrounding parking lots and roadways leading to the county-owned facility placed on lockdown. Lockdown happened just after 7 o'clock. A BCSO spokesperson confirmed officials were alerted to a trash can that forced BCSO and NBA security to execute the shutdown protocol. It was later determined there was no threat. Lockdown lifted and tip-off was ready to go about 7.30. Silver and Black were in action, welcoming the Utah Jazz to town. Now, Spurs were on top of this, and from the get-go, seven Spurs finished with double-digit points. Devin Vassell had 24 leading the way for San Antonio. The Spurs get the W in what turned out to be a high-scoring affair. The final from the AT&T Center, Spurs 126, Jazz 122. We continue to have each other's back through thick and thin of the game. Um, and, you know, like you said, we persevered and, and came out on top. I feel like um, they're a good team. I um, mean, you know, the good teams make runs. And, uh, you know, we withstood their run and, um, you know, we won a game. That's the next up for the Spurs tonight. They are in Oklahoma to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Tip off of that one is at 7 o'clock in OKC. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Hey, with the win over the Eagles this past Saturday, believe it or not, there is an outside chance the Cowboys could win the NFC East, but they would have to win out against the Titans and the Commanders, and the Eagles would have to lose out to the Saints and the Giants. So in reality, is there still hope of winning the division? Hey, if they go and help us out and, and drop a couple of games, hell yeah, we're going to take the title. I mean, that's that, that's awesome. But um, we have no say-so in that at this point. All we can do is um, continue to win out and, and hope on that. And uh, I'm not a guy that hopes on a lot of failure. So um, obviously, I want the title, and that'd be great. Um, but that, that, that's that's just getting into distractions that don't really pay any pay us any anything for. Doesn't that look like fun? Longhorns riding the tallest and fastest screaming swing in the world. And if that wasn't enough, some of the Washington Huskies in the pool with the Dolphins at SeaWorld. So they enjoyed some of the extra things that go on here in San Antonio around the Alamo Bowl. That's why the Alamo Bowl is one of the most popular bowls in the entire country. It's well viewed mm -hmm. and Kids love coming There's here. Players so much love coming to here. do here. Well, I saw some buses yesterday yeah. near downtown, and I was like, oh, I know who, the, who are in those buses. And you look at the uh, weather we're having, and now go out to the golf courses. 
and see how many people have come down to play some golf, walking on the river with this great weather from Washington. You know, they want to get out of that cold up there. Yeah. So Welcome we to San Antonio. And real quick, J.J. Watt, remember the yes. defensive lineman for the Saw Texans? That on Instagram. Looks like he is ready to retire at the end of this season. Of course, he plays for the Arizona Cardinals. Now, there was a picture of him, his wife, and his little baby. He has a newborn And I think that baby. got him. Yeah. <laughs> he said, okay. I'm, I don't blame him. I'm tired of being here all the time, so I'm going to go ahead and call it good. Congratulations, so, yeah. J.J. All right, still ahead, advice for the new year when it comes to your money. We'll tell you what you need to know to have financial success. And winter on Mars. Have you ever heard of it? NASA has released some new images showing us what it looks like. Welcome back. A newly elected congressman from New York, Republican George Santos, admits he made up major details of his resume and background. The acknowledgement comes after a New York Times investigation revealed Santos' personal and professional experience was false. NBC's Elizabeth Schultz has more from Washington. In a stunning reversal, New York Republican Congressman-elect George Santos now admits he embellished large parts of his resume. Santos speaking out to city and state NY Sky Ostriker, saying he's sorry, but won't step down. I'm not resigning. Mm -hmm. I have to leave Congress, Sky. It's going to be by a pink slip by the voters November of 2024. A New York Times investigation last week found Santos lied about everything from his education to his work on Wall Street to his family background. Santos telling voters his grandparents survived the Holocaust and fled to Brazil. My grandparents survived the Holocaust, so these regimes of socialism, Marxism, they don't work. He now says he's clearly Catholic, only referring to himself as Jew-ish. Santos also admitting he lied about working at Goldman Sachs and Citigroup and about graduating from Baruch College. Still, top Republicans are staying silent about the revelations as they rely on Santos as part of their new narrow majority in the House. Democrats pouncing. We need answers from George Santos. He appears to be a complete and utter fraud. Santos did not answer specific questions about his finances. Campaign finance disclosures raised questions about how his wealth quickly accumulated ahead of the 2022 campaign. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Back here on the border, the National Guard has installed over two miles of fencing since the first feet of border fencing went up in El Paso last week. That's according to a Texas National Guard spokesperson who said Monday that more fencing is expected to be installed. As of yesterday, an estimated 22,000 migrants were sleeping in shelters and makeshift encampments across three northern Mexico cities, a number that is only expected to grow as Title 42 remains in legal limbo. The number of asylum seekers in the U.S. has reached 1.6 million. Applications are pending in U.S. immigration courts. This is the largest number ever recorded. U.S. immigration courts have experienced a seven-fold increase in asylum cases from fiscal year 2012 when there were just 100,000 cases pending. Syracuse University has been keeping track of these numbers. The average wait for an asylum hearing is more than four years, but in Omaha's immigration court, the wait time is now to almost six years. Overseas in Taiwan, the period of mandatory military service being extended from four months to a year. This comes after rising threats from China. Taiwan's president made the announcement today. The new period of service will begin in 2024 and will be eligible for those born after 2005. The president expressed that decision is necessary to protect their national security. And in parts of Japan, mainly along the country's western coast, have been hit by heavy snow due to powerful winter fronts. Officials say heavy snow has killed 17 people and injured more than 90 others. The snowfall over the weekend brought the death toll up. One woman was found buried in the snow after it fell on her from a rooftop. Outside with live cam, beautiful week, beautiful time to be off from school, maybe from work, enjoying the holidays as the week progresses, the temperature rises. Gotta love that. Absolutely, and here's something to keep in mind. Outside right now, we've got these beautiful cirrus clouds moving in, those wispy thin cirrus clouds. Right around sunset, they're going to make for gorgeous sunsets. So make sure to step outside uh, anytime between 5 and about 540, and you'll see a beautiful sunset. Temperatures, though, warming up. It's now in the 50s, 52 degrees in San Antonio. 
But this morning we had a freeze. Here's a look at this morning's lows. We've already seen temperatures rise from 20 degrees in San Antonio. We got down to 32 degrees elsewhere. Generally in the upper 20s for this morning's low temperatures got down to 27 in Bernie, 28 in New Braunfels. Our sixth day in a row where the low has been at or below freezing. You won't have to worry about freezing temperatures tomorrow morning, though, or for that matter, for the rest of the week. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be at 35, around in the mid-30s in San Antonio. But by Thursday, our morning low is going to be close to our average high this time of year. We're going to be in the upper 50s for our morning low. Now, if you think this is warm, just wait until you see those afternoon high temperatures over the weekend. We're talking high temperatures in the mid-70s. It's going to be very pleasant, and all of that, a cold snow will be a thing of the past for us, at least until the next Arctic cold front. I've got the details for your New Year's Eve weekend coming up in a bit. David, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. The opioid crisis has taken a toll on many Americans for two decades, and we are grateful that doctors can now treat opioid addiction with many medications. But researchers from Massachusetts General Hospital found that some people may not reap the benefit from this treatment. With more, here is ABC's Justin Finch. Studies find that more black and Hispanic patients are dying from opioid overdose. Data from the last 10 years also show that black and Hispanic patients are treated less for opioid use disorder compared to white patients. Buprenorphine is one type of treatment. It can be a pill, injection, or even a temporary muscle implant. It reduces cravings and withdrawal symptoms and keeps patients safe by reducing the chances of an overdose. A recent study found more white patients kept receiving treatment for at least 180 days compared to black and Hispanic patients. Black and Hispanic patients need better access to doctors and clinics because longer treatment means better quality of life. So if you or someone you know is suffering from this disease and needs help accessing medications, please call your doctor or an addiction medicine specialist as soon as possible. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. Well, gas prices are rising once again after the break, how this will affect Americans in the upcoming warmer months. And new year, new money, some financial success next we're going to have some advice for you on how to achieve that financial success in 2023.